is sunny, and I'm Bianca, and we represent the High School Student Council. Welcome to our Q&A session uh, with our TIS alumni, Charles Lur. Before we begin, our secondary principal, Mr. Lauren Schmidt, would like to say a few words. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session that we have today. Uh, we're very happy that Charles has agreed to field your questions. He has heard them ahead of time, so it will be a candid and honest response. Uh, Charles started at TAS, I think, in 2014? Yeah. In grade 7. And before that, you were in China, studying school in China. So then he came to TIS uh, and graduated from TIS six years later. So we're very happy to have the alumni joining us and one who has uh, done some wonderful things outside of school. And that's what today is about, is some of the achievements that Charles has uh, done outside of the uh, regular school, but I'm sure TIS has a big part in his life. So thank you so much, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. We have representatives from primary and middle school leadership with some questions today. These questions were posed by all students grade, uh, from grade four and above, and we have the best questions to ask today. So let's begin the Q&A session. Hi. Hi, I'm Gabby and I'm from middle school leadership and my question is, how did you begin your career as a race car driver? Well, I think well, I started it's because of a arcade game, like when I was a kid, when I was still in three or four. Like those gaming places isn't that organized, so we were allowed to go into this arcade place when I was three or four. So yeah, I was pretty much just gaming inside with the racing. So, yeah, I think that's what got, like, got me interested into racing. So, yeah, and later on, we have a field trip in China at Guangzhou, I believe. Um, yeah, there's a small car track. And we went on it, and I just get addicted to it. So, yeah, I think that's how it started. Hi, I'm Autumn from Primary Leadership. Is there anyone who inspired you to become a race car driver? If so, who? I think there wasn't really like a specific person that inspired me into anything. Most of the things is um, like it really depends on the environment you're in. It really depends on what you're doing and like what you're looking for in life. And yeah, like I just like it. And I'm in, I was in that environment, like, like, if you're a kid now, you're not allowed into the art places. So, yeah, so it's quite different from the past to now as well. And yeah, like, if you're in the right places, I think the right things will happen. Hi, my name is Terry. I'm from primary school leadership. Did your family support your decision to be a race car driver? Why or why not? At the start, um, my family was about worrying about uh, worrying about um, like the safety issues with racing, because people always think racing is a really dangerous sport. But um, when we are into it, we actually found that wasn't that dangerous like it's compared to other sports like racing if you actually search up in Google and look for like the, like how many people dies in the <laughs> racing every year like um, and it shows the other sports as well right and, but racing is quite low actually like because the safety is actually getting better and better every year so yeah like I think that's something that is something that changed their mind. So yeah, we look forward to it and I always like it. So yeah, as long as I like it, I'm actually pushing myself for it. Like they will just support me. Hi, my name is Renita and I'm from the primary leadership team. How old were you when you won your first race? 
I think when I was nine, I believe, like I was racing against adults instead of the people in the same age. So yeah, I had quite a good start with my karting, and yeah, like, I think I'm just naturally into it. It's just easy for me to adapt into it as well. So yeah, I think that was one of the good wins because. It feel it actually feel really special when you're against against all the adults and yeah you're just stay like you're just nine years old there and everyone is like at least fifteen above to thirty so yeah it's something special. Hi, my name is Brian and I am from primary year fifteen. What car do you like best? What type of car do you drive? I don't really have a favorite car, uh, but I think the type of car that I'm really into is Formula cars, like, because Formula 1 is the stage that every driver want to be on in the future, and yeah, not really road cars, really. but it's, it's, yeah, sometimes I like those super cars as well, but yeah, but I like Formula cars more. Hi, my name is Sophia, I'm a primary leadership team. What work is involved and how much do you practice to get good at racing? How and where did you practice for a Grand Prix? Like, to practice, um, it's quite different to the other sports that you just get to, like for example, like football or basketball, and you just go get the ball and just start kicking with it. But racing is like, uh, if there's a specific time you need to come, and, like you need the track, you need the car, and yeah, you have to be on time with the practice uh, every day. So every week we only get two days off, because we have school as well, right? So we only get to do it on Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, that's what I did before with my practice, but in grade nine, I think I skip quite a lot of classes. <laughs> yeah. right. Like basically every week on Friday, I was skipping classes for from a car practicing. And yeah, the teacher was high. Yeah, quite happy with it. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm really looking forward to push myself to like a stage up there. So yeah, I think it's quite worth it to sacrifice sometimes. Um, yeah, like to prepare for the Grand Prix, I think if you count the Macau as the Grand Prix, like <clears throat> it's not only practice that can bring you there, it requires a lot of things like uh, practice, the marketing yourself, and um, yeah, just it's just a very complicated thing to get into the Grand Prix, so yeah, like. It's not as simple as like, oh, I want to join your race. I want to uh, go in there and just race against against the people. Like it doesn't work like that. It really requires a lot of like uh, winning practices and you know, past experience. So yeah, like that's how we go into the memory. Hi, I'm Carolina. I'm with middle school leadership. Um, my question for you is, can you describe the feeling of what it's like to drive a race car? Do you ever feel scared? Like, I'm not like a, I don't think I'm a weird person, but I really like to uh, risk myself a lot in every type of thing. Like, every time I go for the limit, um, I just really enjoy that feeling because it's just very exciting all the time as well. And I enjoy the speed, I enjoy um, doing everything and push everything to the limit. Um, yeah, I've never, never actually feel scared and I actually broke my arm before as well. And yeah, twice, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a big deal to me for like crashing. Hi, I'm Natalie from Middle School Leadership, and my question is, what is the most exciting part of the race? 
I like the starts a lot because the start is where you need to have a very good reaction time and also have a good control with the clutch. Like just in case you don't know what the clutch is, it's just something for us to launch the car. And also sometimes for gear shifting. But yeah, because everyone will just fight for positions and everyone is just side by side. I think that's a very exciting moment. And yeah, like a lot of position changes in that time. And yeah, just pushing the limit with the person right beside you. So I think that's the most that's quite exciting. Yeah, I think that's the most exciting part. Hi, uh, I'm Perry from Middle School Leadership. Uh, my question is, have you had, have you ever had an accident while racing? Yeah, as I said, I had a broken arm, and it was during grade nine as well. Yeah, we were, I was racing the China Championship in China with the karting. And when we're going into the corner, and the guy pushed me in the grass. So my car slowed down a bit. The whole go car is like his go car was flipped up, and then it just banged on my arm. So yeah, and then there was a couple of spin, and yeah, I think that that was a quite interesting story as well. Like when I was in Beijing, I go to have the check with my arm. It's broken. It's at the wrong places, and. Yeah, the doctor just pulled my arm just to put it back into the position. But without any other, like, like, yeah, without any other supports. So after he pulled it, he didn't go back to the extra again. So when, after three days I'm back into Macau, I can lift my arm up a bit, like, like normal. But when I go check again, it's still at the wrong place. <laughs> So they just put my arm again, like three person was holding me. Yeah, like straight away you can feel the bones of the twitching. Like, yeah, but I didn't really get scared afterward, but yeah, I just keep pushing for what I like. I think, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it doesn't really matter because the first month was quite tiring because people were saying my arm just stink. Seeing when, when I was sitting in the classes and they're like, like your arm is just because you can't shower with your arms when you're you know like you can't shower with a broken arm because right? you can't get it back and yeah just they're in a case for a month so yeah it's not big to at the end of the day. I'm Annette from Student Council and how does it feel to represent Macau at World Class? It's something to be proud of, as Macau is not a big place. Like Macau, we only have eight hundred thousand people, and you are able to go to the world class stage. It's something that a lot of people want to achieve, and yeah, like, it's just really special in this area. And yeah, but I don't really feel I feel honored to represent Macau, but I. But what it's always in my mind, just going for what I like. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Emilia, and I'm in primary leadership. My question for you is, who is your biggest competitor at this stage? I think there isn't a competitor that is against me in this stage, but only myself is the competitor. Like, because there's a lot of things you need to go through, especially in racing. Like, you have to have your mental set. You have to have, because uh, racing is a very complicated sport. It's not like you're good, you can go up to a better stage. Racing is like you have to do a lot of uh, arts and work. Like, you have to be a businessman when you're 16. So, yeah, you have to package yourself and. Yeah, because Macau, there is some like a, they they don't have the right person for helping out the uh, young drivers, not at the moment. Uh, so a lot of things is managed by myself, and the first time I go to racing uh, in Europe, 
it was by myself as well and I was 16. And my, parent, my parents just signed the paper and I just go there with my own luggage and people look at me weird because like why is this Chinese kid here with uh, luggage just pulling around in the racetrack and find, trying to find the places to go and yeah because everyone had like a manager or anything just following them but yeah, I was alone at the time at that time back in 2018 it was formula free so yeah it's just but I actually learned a lot how a lot by myself as well because you're at a very difficult stage so you just mm -hmm. always build up that strong mental inside you so pretty much at the end of the day you learn a lot Hi, I'm Michael from the Middle School Leadership Team. My question is, do you still enjoy playing racing video games like Mario Kart after racing a real race car? Mario Kart is pretty fun, actually. I, I like Mario Kart. Uh, Mario Kart is very fun when you're against the other drivers as well. Because we actually had like a race at the, um, the eSports Center. Like we had a race with Mario Kart with all the Grand Prix driver. Yeah, it was a private session, so we didn't actually show anybody else. So yeah, it was quite competitive. Everyone just throwing, yeah, banana and beans. And throwing <laughs> it. Yeah, just, just trying to destroy others. So yeah, I, I actually still enjoy quite a lot playing video games with racing. Hi, I am Jacko, and as a two times Macau Grand Prix winner, how does it feel to be associated with the same of the greatest drivers in history? To be honest, like I'm not really satisfied with the two wins in these two years. I know it's something that's very special. It's the first driver to get two time Macabre winner but I really want to race in the Formula 3 instead because I want to show that we actually have the uh, capability to win the people from the European side and not just the Chinese side yeah just to show our ability so yeah but I don't know when I will actually be back in the form of three cards or anything. So yeah, let's see. But it still feels very special to win the you know, cow. Hi, I am Tyler from the middle school leadership. Can you describe the ups and downs of your racing career? I actually had my hardest time through 2018 and 2019. Because when I was winning all the junior categories in Formula Cars, like Formula 4 and Formula Renaults, I was actually winning both championships in the same year, 2017. But I didn't get enough support from, uh, yeah, from anyone else. Like, and it was the hardest time for me because I didn't have enough budget to do racing. Like there isn't like a person from Macau that knows how it works or how it yeah, like just how to manage it. Like no one knows. So I didn't have enough sponsorship, so every time I like going to the track, I didn't have enough practice. So I'm against the people that's probably in the car for a year, but I'm just there for a week. So yeah, I'm just like a bit miserable and when you're sixteen or seventeen you don't think of like branding yourself or anything, you're just looking forward to push yourself more and try to win the races. Uh, uh, however, at the end of the day, like, let's do two times Grand Prix winner. Uh, but Formula 3, I think for myself, yeah, it was kind of a waste because I was only 16 or 17 at, the, at that time when I was racing in Formula 3. So, yeah, I didn't really get to do it properly, and I want to do it properly in the future as well, if I have a chance. So, 
Yeah, I believe it's 2018 and 2019. Hi, I'm Doris of Middle School Leadership. What country do you plan on competing in next? I don't have a specific plan yet, as studying is actually quite important. So I'm moving in into UK probably end of this month. And yeah, just to get it. still need to finish that uni. So don't stop studying. Like actually, like you might not know why now, but when you're at my age, when you look back, you actually I actually feel that TIS is building a very good logic inside. Like with open mind, and yeah, I remember that was something that I was unhappy about. But <laughs> yeah, like studying is very important. Like, I know I didn't have a good grade as well, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was because I was actually absent for how many days? In class? Actually, I'm not gonna say it. So. <laughs> so yeah, because you want, because when you don't have like a special thing that's happening around with you, like the only thing you just study, like try to look for a, maybe a place you want to go in uni, and try to find something that you want to approach. And yeah, like for me, I really like racing. And I think I'm just gonna do something. Really related to cars, maybe, or maybe other other stuff in the future as well. But at the moment, I'm more focusing on cars. Um, like if I have a chance to go back to like the class as well, I think I will actually probably work harder with my marks. Yeah, and so I can do this somewhere. Because I actually hear some places that I want. Yeah, with the absence and any other things that just push my grade down a bit. And yeah, at the end of the day, I'm still happy. And so just keep it, work hard, like work hard on this, on this school works. Yeah, it makes a big change. Hi, my name is Shoyo and I'm in primary leadership. My question for you is, do you plan to move up to F1 racing? A lot of people ask me these questions. Uh, if it's two year, two or three years ago, I would still say yes. But for now, I think I'm approaching more toward like maybe helping the other drivers because I think I I'm still young. But I think to approach Formula One, I'm not at the right age. It should have been young. Like when I was sixteen, I was only seventeen. I was in Formula 3, that was the right time. But uh, now I'm just in Formula 3. Like, there's still a lot of drivers that's in that in that 20s in the Formula 3. But, yeah. I think it's better to, for me to change my route a bit. Uh, yeah, just doing a lot of things in the next trying to help others out and share my experience with the others. And yeah. I did help with the eSport part as well as we just won the China Championship with the eSport as well like last week at Malcolm uh, yeah, just sharing my experience and helping out the others and yeah, the good result just come out straight away so yeah, I think I'm just gonna change the way to approach from the one probably not being the um, driver there but being like yeah, I think being the team principal is one Hi, my name is Lena and I'm representing High School Student Council. Um, my question is, how does being a race car driver affect your friendships and romantic relationships outside? school I think I missed out quite a bit in during middle school because I actually need to sacrifice the time spending with friends 
to go for my practice during Saturday and Sunday. And yeah, but still managed to be quite well and some good friends because I think as long as you're being a good person and yeah, doing the right thing, I think it's pretty much easy to attract the others to you. So it's not really a big deal for that part. For the romantic part, I think uh, yeah, there was quite a few arguments with me spending more time in racing, but uh, yeah, like, but at the end of the day, if you have a good negotiation with you know, with that person, then yeah, and try to have a good explanation as well, and try to make that person understand. Yeah, I think that's a key to approach something that you want. And yeah, it's pretty much fun. Hi, my name is Joanna and I'm from Primary Leadership. Race car driving seems very glamorous from a young person's perspective. What is the reality behind the glamour? sure like about the other stuff is there like how people look at it um, especially people around my car is very different like different perspective of racing because racing sometimes it's quite uh, like people might think you're yeah, just like a rich kid that does racing sometimes and yeah I think just the perspective is quite as well, like, can't really, that's something I want to change as well, like, this racing is, like, the people that, what I heard from people that uh, knows racing is quite different from what I understand in racing, so, yeah, something to change, something to approach in the future as well, yeah, try to understand it's a healthy sports. Yeah. Hi, I'm Hannah from the primary leadership team. We heard that you're an entrepreneur. What business do you currently own? So the first business we had a coffee shop and then we moved on with the uh, uh, racing and the yellow sandbox together. So <coughs> Yeah, we're doing mostly like racing simulation these days because racing simulation is actually more mature than before. Like people still, but the main issue is people still think that it's like a gaming, it's not like a proper driving, like proper driving simulator. So yeah, and we, are, we actually sweat a lot when we're on that machine, and that's we're trying to look for the limit all the time as well. Um, yeah, there's quite a few things that we're doing, and I was coaching some kids back in my place as well. Yeah, yeah they enjoyed it quite well, well and yeah, they kind of learned discipline as well with me coaching. Yeah, so uh, yeah, being an entrepreneur is harder than what I thought, what I think before as well. Like you always think like you're gonna just uh, give the works to the uh, employees to do. Um, yeah, like, but at the end of the day, you are the person that is uh, that has the closest relationship with your with your business. So when something goes wrong, you have to manage it. When something you want, when you want more, you have to like negotiate a lot with the worker, and also have to have to. Yeah, you need the worker to listen to you, so and working quite hard. So even when I was working outside, I actually and t- talking and having meeting with the other people, I actually hide my age instead. Yeah, so yeah, it's quite hard, but I really enjoyed the I really enjoyed the experience, and yeah, actually learned quite a lot through it. 
I'm Jasmine from Student Council, and my question for you is, what do you want to do after you retire from racing? I think I was half retired already. <laughs> like, I didn't really get to do a lot of racing during those two years. Like, yeah, I was surprised that I can still win the Grand Prix. Yeah, I only had, like, a week of driving before the Grand Prix as well. Like, and then, though, that week of driving, before the week of driving, the last time I drive was a Grand Prix as well, so nine months without driving. So, yeah, still well managed, but I think I'm more of a business guy right now, and also a guy that try to uh, approach racing in a different way, and try to spread the messages to people in Macau that racing is not it's going to be quite a hard work, but yeah, if you really like the sport, if you really want to like join racing, then I think that's a, that's a good thing to do. Hi, I'm Natasha from High School Student Council, and my question for you is, what are your plans for the future? My plans for the future is quite um, unpredictable yet. But we have some short-term stuff that we want to do, like trying to start up the, like uh, racing schools and go kart teams, racing teams. Maybe a bit later when the pandemic, when the pandemic is better. Uh, yeah, that's actually quite a lot to do for me, like in the future as well. So there isn't like a specific target yet because we really need to know what we have and what's going to happen in probably the next few months. Year. So, yeah, I know what my final target is at least. So, just follow the, just follow what is happening right now with Macau. And yeah, see the future. All right. Well, thank you, Charles, for sharing, and thank you for attending today. We would now like to invite Mr. Schmidt to say a few words. Thank you so much, Charles, for all the, the words of advice that you've given our students here. Uh, I was really struck by how you, you've really communicated that it's not easy. You have to work hard to get the achievements that you've done. And you have had to do a lot of work yourself that people that might not really have realized. That you're your own manager. That You might think, well, he must have a manager because he's a famous race car driver. You've had to do a lot of this stuff yourself. And um, you, you navigated the sporting industry uh, in broken ground for Macau. And uh, we're so glad that you could share that experience. And I'm happy to hear that your future vision is to, to help educate the people in Macau and help bring young drivers uh, through uh, to be as successful as possible. So we appreciate your time here, Charles. Thank you. I'd like to pass on a little gift from the TIS to you. I know you might have missed a few classes, but you did, did do very well in the end, and you did graduate here. So here's a little bit of TIS uh, spike that you can wear, and we're so happy to have you as one of our alumni and a representative, not just from Macau, but for TIS as well. Thank you so much. And this concludes our event today. Big thanks to Mr. Schmidt and the communications team for arranging this Q&A, and to you, the audience, for your respect and insightful questions. And Charles, is there anything you want to add? I actually want to ask, what do you guys think of racing is? And also, is there anything, like, what are your mindset in life as well? Like, I know you guys are young, but I, would, I still want to know because when I was in your age, I do have like a, something special that I want to approach in myself. Can anyone answer me or? I've always wanted to be a bat. A what? I have always wanted to be a bat. Like, why? Like, like 
I've always really liked animals and they've always been there for me. I always wanted to be a break dancer and I started break dancing when I was four. Why? Because I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah, that was what I first. Yeah, that, that's actually something I had inside me, like part of me. Because I think racing is because some, everyone contracts and cover their nine. So I think, yeah. <laughs> A singer, because it's something that I enjoy doing, and if I have support, I can do um, I can do things that will impact the world and help people. What does someone come over and say your singing is bad? Keep going, because it's just their opinion. Yeah, so I, want, I really want to make it big as a musician, like as a guitarist. And I uh, made a band. It's called Anti Theory. You can follow Anti Theory on the on this. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So I realized that I don't really, I don't really do anything like in my free time. So I decided to, like, you know, pick a skill, like, learn it, and just, like, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, I'm just gonna do some shameless promotion. But if anyone wants to join our band, uh, <laughs> you can um, message me or email me. But you want to Oh, that would be um, J I E M. Um, I've always wanted to be a writer because. It's like when I didn't have a lot of friends, I could read, and it'd be like having friends. On the topic of mindset I just mentioned, at TIS we have something called the growth mindset. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. And that is something that I personally really want to embody, since I believe that hard work can turn into skills and knowledge in the future, because I see you as a very good role model in that. So I also want to, I basically see you as a role model and I really thank you for coming here today. Thank you so much. I also uh, wanted to be a writer because if I was just feeling bad or having an off day, I could rely on the pen and paper and it just put everything that I want to say or things that I want to do just on paper and it was a way for me to kind of let go. It's good to say it out, isn't it? It's not a waste of money because you actually learn a lot throughout this whole experience because you're always by yourself. It's not as sim like it's not simple to say it's always by yourself, like because there's actually a lot happening when you're alone in the other countries. So yeah, you just adapt, you just adapt a lot, and throughout yeah, there's also an interesting story to share. From my side, uh, when I was in TIS, I was actually really hot headed. I was actually quite like quite like a crazy person in TIS. 
Yeah, I was f actually fighting quite a bit. But yeah, don't learn from that, no. And yeah, but throughout these years, I learned to control myself more. And yeah, always have that cool head, control that fire inside myself as well. And yeah, I think that's what really invest on me, like it's just to have uh, proper control of when to be hungry or like when to really go for something. So yeah, I know how what is the amount. And yeah, I remember there's something that I actually kind of regret that I did in the IS as well, but <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but always try to have a cool mind at first and even when you're having an argument with your friends or anything, just really just step down, go away. Like cool because you don't want to have like a broken friendship. Because I actually have one with KK if this is this yeah, this is from Frank Nose. So yeah. Like it takes like nearly half a year and nearly to a year to fix it. And yeah, because we really, really didn't get a chance and it was quite a bad one. So yeah, don't go and don't go like straight away and be like I don't like you or anything. Like just try to have more of like a balance inside. Just try to even if he or she is going really hard on you, maybe just move back yourself a bit. Like yeah, because that's part of what I learned as well. Like is to be more open to everything. Like for example, when someone take your one lot or anything, like don't try to be like a chaser. Like it's not like I don't think that's a good example, but yeah, try to be more. Uh, uh, yeah, but don't look, don't look for small things. Actually, be more look for details, but don't. Uh, Look for, small, look for small things of what that person do and what that thing cost you because yeah that thing is just gonna happen along the line and yeah just get on with it. Okay, well uh, thank you Charles for inspiring us with your achievements and we can't wait to see what you accomplish next and thank you to the audience um, for being so patient and for also sharing all of your dreams that takes a lot of bravery and courage so. Thank you so much for that and have a great rest of your day. Bye.